Good evening YouTube. So here we have a Growatt MTL 5, oh, 5000 MTL. Let's go. 5000 MTL. Grid tyre. Inverter R. You might have seen this in previous videos where I fired it up off uh, some Milwaukee batteries. I'll leave a link to one of those below. Decided because it's a bit on the dangerous side for uh, me to be dabbling in 240 volt electricity, especially without any proper safety systems, that I'll be no longer playing with it. Um, bits and pieces like these just for safety's sake and I don't really want to lead anyone down the garden path to do something themselves and get hurt uh, that's the main reason but that's not the real reason for this video I'm going to show you what we can pull out of one of these and reuse so the first thing I want to mention is the case will mostly be aluminium That just a grounding wire. Phillips head screw will get that grounding cable off there. So the face plane's just grounded to the rest of the inverter. Undo that one. Okay. So aside from that rubber seal and a bit of crappy plastic. That's a beautiful big chunk of aluminium. So we'll put that away for another day. I'm sure we'll find a use for that. It does have this step in it which isn't super helpful but um, this side's all but flat. So big piece of aluminium. Remember at bare minimum it's got scrap value. So don't ever discount the uh, scrap value of a machine like this. So when I tested it I just had this little earth lead, uh, mains lead on there. I'm going to take this off. You never want to leave plugs on something that's dangerous. It goes to the junkyard, someone will plug it in accidentally or whatever and get hurt. Whenever you're leaving a lead, we just got a plug and these on the ends. Best thing is to twist them together like so. So if somebody does accidentally plug it in, it'll instantaneously trip a circuit breaker or an RCD. Preferably an RCD if you've got something semi-modern. Okay. So we'll bring the camera up a bit so we can see a bit more. Have a look inside this beast. So obviously we've got some control circuitry. Up top, we've got what I'm assuming a step up inverters. In the back here, someone correct me if I'm wrong. We've got a nice tribe of 7,000 UF. Supposed to use micro, pico. Can't remember. Um, capacitors, all nice, nice big sized ones. Now, if you're going just straight up for scrap value, you can just undo everything that's copper, everything that's aluminium, and just go non ferrous metal attack. Non ferrous metal is always the one that's worth something. So, we've got these terminals here. Bear in mind I got this for free, it's not like it's a uh, one that I paid thousands of dollars for. I'm sure they're worth good money when they're new and been used. This one supposedly had a AC frequency registration issue, so it would struggle to pick up the uh, grid frequency. When it couldn't pick up the grid frequency, it had shut down. Because I have to pick up the grid frequency to match it, you see. Okay, that's them. Then the bottom here. 
MC4 connectors. And a bunch of them got flying leads on them. So that's just six screws. Oh no, they torques. Light here, they're not just normal ones. Smaller than that. Maybe that one. No, it's still smaller. Bought this cool little set from uh, Bunnings that's serving me well so far. Oh, still small. What am I doing? What's that? T15. T15, I should have known. That's so close to the T10s that I use all the time. For the uh, Milwaukee batteries and such. I'm going to keep all of these screws. I need to start a few like parts trays of all these screws because I'm doing projects more and more that require fasteners. You don't want to have to resort to the old roof screw for every single job you do. So let's just keep tearing this thing down while we're going. This may end up being a long video, but uh, you know I skip through it. Okay, so those are six screws which mount this MC4 connector block. And on the other side, they got spade terminals. How good's that? I'm finding with these grid tie inverters that they're really more a pile of pieces that have been made into something. So each of them's got a its own gland and nut. They're going to be handy as handy for solar systems. I've also got a handful of these just laying around. I cut off my solar panels that are powering the lights and stuff in the shed now. Big win. That's two awesome things out of this grid tie inverter already. This was discarded in the bin, remember? This this was this is bin grid tie. Okay, next major thing that I want is the heat sink off the back. I'm not going to make you suffer through watching me undo the 30 something screws that are around it. Um, I can do that while we're not recording. So I'll give you a break in a minute. Let's get one of these inverter blocks. I think they're an inverter. I'm pretty sure they are. Like I said, someone in the comments will know better than I do. But judging by the fact there's four of them, there's four lots of inputs. I think I'm onto the, uh, onto the money. One thing I've got to say is these things are heavy. See them mounted on everyone's wall. Oh, there's a limitation. Limitation to the super screwdriver. It's hung up on the uh, side here. Problem solved, the little Milwaukee insulated one's got it. So we'll pull all these out and we might even cut one open at some stage just for a look. I've carted this grid tie around for far too long. It's time to pull it apart and say goodbye. I've got a mate who has a solar company. I'm sure if I ask him nice enough, he'll be able to give me another one to play with another. Another day. Right, so we just cut a couple of cable ties. And... What's in there? That's oh, a choke. Alright. Alright, now nah, I'm officially confused as to what that is. Someone in the comments hook a brother up, I need to know. Whatever they are, they're in a big chunk of aluminium, they're potted completely, they're bloody heavy, and they've got big cables in and out. Someone hook me up, let me know. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get the other four of those out, and then we'll start on the back plane and have a look on the board for anything else that's interesting. We'll be back. Alright guys, got tons of things unscrewed. What else have I managed to get out of this? Good tie inverter. I've got four of these threaded 
maybe an M3 extension some thin mild steel plate which could be used for something another day they're pretty cool always good to have something like that on the shelf there is a few eyelets on the end of a few different cords and a terminal block here so we'll just uh, snip these out another ferrite coil, I think they're called a ferrite coil, another terminal block, this is the uh, line, the neutral on the earth out of the machine, so beefy terminal block, we never say no. Okay. Here is the main board, whoa, okay, cool, I didn't know they were there. They are all the Moffsets or Fets or whatever floats your boat that you want to call them that are pressed against a thermal pad on the back side of the inverter. Here's all our capacitors there. Cool. I'm sure if I uh, have a chat to my buddy we can use those for something. Let's stand right up and see what's written on them. Yep, they've got numbers. Okay, there's two different kinds here. Six R O forty five HBK one twenty five. He's small, and I need a really white light to read him. But uh, they look like diodes, judging by the symbols. Diode. Like I said. I've got a buddy that's a fair bit cluier at this kind of stuff. It's a thousand microfarad, 315 volts. So they are high voltage capacitors. Probably reasonable quality. Ten of them. And then another four 390 farad ones. A couple of couple of decent relays here 400 volt 10 amp two of them I believe these green and blue ones will be relays as well a solder on terminal block which would be cool to pull out and use for something they're always handy I think that one there might be a thermistor inside a lug a handful of cool small aluminium heat sinks that we can use for something more diodes those two, yeah they I think they are diodes and a bunch of ceramic resistors, 3 watts 5 watts, and there's a couple of different ones there so they come in handy on discharge boards and things like that when they die. I think that's a current shunt because that's where the line and neutral exited the, well not a shunt sorry, like a hall effect like a clamp meter has. And the outlet there. Feel free to correct me in the comments because I know I'll be getting some of this wrong. So yeah I'm pretty happy with that. That's a cool stack of hardware out of a free grid tie. So We'll get the rest of these screws out and uh, we'll get the back plane off and I'll explain why I want it. Alright, take the shell off. If I got them all out. Maybe. Surely there's not more. I've pulled so many machine screws out. Look at them all. Right, just needed a real gentle strategic love tap. There's all your 
Finest machine screws if you ever wanted some. Not sure what. RS485. Two pin plugs are. I don't have any of the, the male side to go in them, so I'm not going to worry too much about them. So, yeah, steel frame that's useful for something. And here we have this beautiful, big, flat piece of extruded goodness. This side, dead flat. Uh, got a bunch of machine head screw nut certs in there. That's a thermal thermal transfer pad that all the FET's were sitting against. Missed one of those. Had a heap of these standoff. Standoff. Nut sets, so I've got a ton of those short. I've got a ton of these short ones too. Have to be like at least a dozen of them. Um, right, what do I want this for? This is going to go on the top of my rocket stove. Possibly even a second one of these if I can get another one. And what I'm going to do is when the heat comes off that top plane of the rocket stove, it's going to hit these and absorb into it. I may even enclose the edges so that it has to soak, really soak in. And then this flat side is going to be covered in TEG, thermoelectric generator modules, this whole side. Now little TEGs, I think I've got one, I'll just see if I've got one laying here. Here's one I prepared earlier. I actually got this one too hot the other day. It's actually a TEC, which is a thermoelectric cooler. Uh, there is a difference. I don't know what the difference is. One generates power more efficiently when you put heat to it. And it can handle better temperatures. So I've got one coming from banggood.com. I can link it in the description if you want. Um, but there will be an updated video when I've actually made one covered in, this covered in them. So when you look at the size, There's one. Just just take that in for a second. I'll get about five watts per each of these as well. So ideally, what I'd love is if I could get all of these sandwiched in there with thermal paste. Another one of these exact inverters as a aluminium backplane, and riddle the thing with fans or even a misting misting fan kind of system to uh, make a temperature differential from this side to that side. Alternatively, I'm going to make some kind of water cooling block, maybe out of aluminium or copper sheet, build up a radiator, which I can transfer water in and out of to a hot water cylinder or a, radi or a second radiator, like a trans cooler or something similar, and use it as a thermoelectric heater for my mate's unit out the back here. Basically, I feed the rocket stove wood, scraps, uh, mulch, whatever, sticks and leaves. This will get heated, these will get heated, this side will get cooled, and 5 watts per module will produce electricity. I'll feed that into some kind of MPT charge control, MM, MPPT charge controller. I always say that wrong. Oh, that's kind of trippy. Look at that. That looked cool. And um, once we transfer that into there, we will have power and hot water as a waste byproduct. So there's probably no reason why I can't make my own heat exchanger tank out of some copper sheet that I've got. And... Then we'll paste both sides, copper sheet on, and just fold up a box out of some copper sheet, and then solder the ends up so that it holds water, an inflow and an outflow, and happy days kind of thing, or even a copper copper tube that does a nice loop down it, and then back out again on a piece of copper sheet, just just to soak that heat up. So once we soak that heat up. Uh, on the cold side of these chipsets, it's it's happy days. Once you've soaked that heat up, the chipset's making power, electricity, power, however you want to say it, 
whatever floats your boat. And it's outputting. I'm also heating water. So my aim is to burn waste products, mulch, garden stuff. We've got a lot of trees on our block. Um, I can get all kinds of timber and stuff from work. Offcuts, building site rubbish, stuff that would normally go to the dump or get mulched, old pallets, and then what we're going to do is do numerous tests on how much wood fuel, like you know, how many pieces of pallet board do you need to start making 100 watts or 500 watts. I'm not sure what I'll get out of it yet. Uh, it's all to do with temperature differential, in feed temperature, and there is a chance that this big chunk of aluminium might disrupt the flow and the actual effect that my rocket stove has. If you haven't seen the rocket stove videos, go back and have a watch. Um, I find them quite interesting. I wish I had built one years ago. The very little amount of fuel you can feed it for the large amount of heat that it will produce, which is really clean, no smoke, that kind of thing, is quite amazing. So, what I might do is uh, mark out this board to get an idea of how many of these I might measure it out get an idea of how many of these I will need to order uh, I'll put a link to these in the description for you they're not these ones but the exact same size they're 40 by 40 uh, from banggood.com and then you too will be able to order Some for your own project. I just had to grab a tape measure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, just nine across that way. Nine by one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, twenty, sixty, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Nine by thirteen on the inner grid. That is awesome. It's gonna cost me some bucks, but uh, if you're keen to see the project, sing out. Let me know. I reckon it's gonna be quite interesting having you know, 5 watts times that many TECs because I've already got the thermal paste all I need is the TECs and wire them and to make a back plane so if you're interested in following the project smack the subscribe button give us a thumbs up just drop me a comment and just say really keen to see the app see, really keen to see this done because I love your feedback it's great having uh, a big community on YouTube it's all about engagement. Engagement, one, brings my video to more people. Two, gives me a little bit of advertising revenue. Three, attracts companies that want to uh, show off and showcase their products, which means I get to review them. And uh, it saves you buying rubbish. I'm, my reviews are always honest. And uh, I don't actually get paid for reviews. I get free items to test and use. But uh, if you haven't seen my inverter videos, have a bit of a look at some of the inverter videos and that'll show you that I'm not going to sugarcoat what, what the product can or can't do. If it can't do it, it can't do it. If you manage to get to the end of this video, give us a thumbs up. If uh, you want to know more about TEC modules, I'm sure there's a million videos on YouTube about how the Seebeck effect works. Uh, I'm not going to be the best to explain that to anyone. As you can see, my knowledge of components and things like that on PCB boards has slipped. I'm a plumber by trade, not in the electrical industry at all. But uh, I'd love to know what these are. Surely they've got to be some kind of step up, but I don't understand how they work. If you could let me know, that would be awesome. BHJK on the base. Mm, there's a model number. If someone can tell me, that would be awesome.
Thanks heaps for watching YouTube. Thanks for subscribing. There'll be more alternative energy style projects over this side somewhere. Up here we'll have a link to uh, where you can subscribe. Thanks for the support. Thanks to my Patreons. Catch us all later guys. Cheers.